All right, hey, what's up guys? This is Preston from the PGK coming at y'all with another video. I know it's been quite a while, extremely busy. We got a lot of projects going on around the house. The garage is absolutely cluttered. Can't really get to the table, but I uh, ended up finding out about an estate sale. And uh, we went to the estate sale. Needless to say, I bought everything that there was train related. So this video is just gonna be a quick little, let's go through everything that I got at the estate sale. It's a lot of projects. None of it's like, oh man, it's super rare or anything. So we're just gonna we're just gonna see what projects I have in store and might try to make videos on it, might not. I'm not really sure. A few of them are really intimidating projects. Well, one of them is a very intimidating project that I want to get fixed, that I want to fix up and get working again. But I'm not sure what's gonna happen. It's I want to film repair videos for you guys, but it's also I gotta be focused and trying to run a camera while doing repairs is really difficult for me. But anyways, we're gonna jump right on in, and if you guys haven't seen this is the train wall this is sitting in my bedroom these are the pride and joy of my collection i have a few more tucked away over here and some under my bed and some in my closet some underneath the train table but i figure you guys can see this i've only shown this off a handful of times but just enjoy and we're going to jump right into this video and we'll catch y'all later all right here we are this is our haul we got three boxes of train stuff um, I kind of had a rough idea of what was at the table. There was one picture. It was extremely pixelated. Couldn't make out any of the prices on anything. But we went. I got there early. And uh, we were looking at it. And I was tossing it back and forth if, it was, if I should try to jump on some of this stuff. And then I told them I'd be interested in the whole lot. They made me an offer of 80 bucks, And I jumped on it because I have, I'm having way too much fun learning how to rip this stuff apart. Fix it. Do all that. So... I do have some parts on uh, order to fix all this stuff up because worst case, I just fix it and flip it. I paid $80 for this entire lot. They were asked, it was 50% off of everything. If only a few train pieces had sold a few uh, tank cars and I think one pre-war American Flyer observation car, just random odds and ends of this lot had sold. And so we ended up getting all this for 80 bucks. And so we're just gonna jump right on in and start unboxing all this. All right, everyone, here is box number one from the estate sale. This, as you guys can tell, nothing too crazy in here. Got a lot of buttons, a lot of miscellaneous ones. This one goes to a 456 coal ramp. Unfortunately, there was no coal ramp. Uh, yeah, all these cords are kind of dry rotted and all that wiring's falling apart. There's a chip in this one. This one seems to be in pretty good shape. Just needs, once again, new cords been cut. This, These wires are cracking on me. Uh, just more odds and ends, lock-ons, just the miscellaneous stuff. Some whistle buttons. Um, buried in there, I want to say there's two sets of 022 switches, I know there's at least one set, but this is, this is more of a rusty, grimy track that, uh, might try to clean up, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this stuff yet, but, once again, you gotta have tracks to run your trains, so this was in that lot, this box, nothing too crazy, so, we're gonna kinda just meander on over to the next box, and we're gonna look, we're gonna skip over this one, so let's get into the next one. All right, here is box number two. This is where stuff is gonna start to get a little bit more interesting. We're gonna start with a little plastic bill uh, gas station in here. Don't know what I'm gonna do with this. It is missing the roof, unfortunately. I don't know, I kinda like the look of this plastic bill building. I really like this. Even though it is missing the roof, this is a really nice looking plastic bill building. Might try to incorporate this on the table, might give it a little custom paint job, try to make it, try to spruce it up, give it a little bit more life. But yeah, that's the first thing in this box. Next thing, nothing too exciting, just regular good old Lionel post-war coal bin. I don't believe it's a speckled variation, but also I have not touched these things. I have not cleaned them. I've done nothing to it. We're going to get to the real exciting thing in this box. We got more track. We got a lot of rusty old 031 curves from the post-war period. We got a switch controller. Whatever this thing is, some sort of weird baggage cart. I... Could not tell you, it's Mark's, so Mark's playset piece, I'm not 100% sure. But, I'm gonna move this box out of the way and we're gonna take this out to show you. This right here is what I'm excited for. I have always loved 497 coaling stations. They're just way too big, way too much fun, and way too loud. Now, as you guys can tell, this thing is rough and it is gross and it needs a lot of love. I mean, just look at that cord. If that doesn't scream fire hazard, I don't know what does. But this is one of those things where this is a very intimidating project to somebody who's never worked on anything like this before for an accessory. I can tear down engines, no problemo. I know this is kind of the same concept, but 
we got a we got a broken string on the bin it's just this thing needs just a little bit of love a lot a lot of dust a lot a lot of crap just all over it but this is going to be a fun little project to try to bring back to life going to try to order some parts and get this thing rocking and rolling again i'm not sure what's going to happen this one i feel like would be fun to document but i also it'd be a little bit hard to work on something that I've never worked on before and try to film it at the same time. So we'll see what ends up happening with this one, but this is gonna be a fun project. So I'm gonna move this one off to the side just to hopefully keep it slightly in camera frame, but we're gonna move on to the next box. Well, 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 box number three. This is where all the goodies are. As you guys can tell right off the bat, we got a truck. We got a random loose post-war truck. This might come in handy. You might never know whenever I'm gonna need a new sp or a, a spare truck. Yeah, I'm always needing them. I know buddies that need them. Can't ever have too many trucks for your rolling stock. It's one of those few pieces that you can always have more of. Um, this was a random thing thrown in the lot. This is a, I believe this was made by Marks. Uh, yes, Marks Toys. A little, uh, little street light. Looks like it uses a, a D cell battery inside of this and. It is missing the top. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this. Not really my cup of tea. I'm not a big fan of the plastic stuff. So we're just going to ignore this. We're going to set this off to the side. Another thing that we got is whatever this thing is. Uh, looks kind of like a car jack. Like maybe there's a, there's a lot of miscellaneous pieces to Mark's play sets. So that's my guess for this thing. Not 100% sure. They're wanting 10 freaking dollars for this. That is insane. So we're just going to ignore this. This is going to go on the other side. All right, as you guys can see, we got Lionel trains on the paper. This is what everyone came for. This right here, this kind of got me excited. I'm a big paper nut when it comes to post-war. This is an instruction manual that was dated in 1946. I'm trying to figure out where that was in this book. Let me take a look real fast. Copyright, yeah. Copyright 1946. So this is an instruction booklet from 1946. This was super cool. I was very excited to find this. It's got the uh, 700E Hudson running on some T-rail track in 1946, even though they, they did not bring back the full-scale Hudson that year. And I believe, I want to say this is a 1957 catalog. This thing is rough. There's pages falling apart. There's big tears, creases. But just, I like my paper stuff. So when this was thrown in with the lot, I couldn't say no, even though I have, I think, three or four of these catalogs. But... Who knows, I might try to get a few pages that are salvageable and maybe frame them just for the artwork, just because it'd be cool to have some old post-war uh, catalog art on the table, or behind the table, against the wall. All right, we got the paperwork, we got the miscellaneous stuff out of the way. Now let's jump into the big stuff that's really going to get the blood flowing. All right, first up, now I don't remember how I put these in here, so we're going to see what we got. Oh, this was one of the cars that got me excited. Eight bucks. As you guys can tell, this is an early tin caboose. And this caboose is gorgeous. It definitely just needs a light cleaning. There's not really a whole lot of surface rust on it. Just, it needs a good bath. Maybe try to straighten out this end. It's a little, a little bent inwards. Now, what is that? That is a 1946 only, 45 and 46 only flying shoe pickup. So this is a 1946 caboose. This is the uh, 2457. I absolutely love this caboose. It's lighted. Haven't tested any of this stuff yet. That'll all come at a later date, more than likely, or we'll do a little update on what has happened with everything that we've bought from this uh, estate sale. Absolutely gorgeous caboose. I love this thing. I was excited to see this. Um, what do we got next? Next up, nothing too crazy. Another very, very common post-war car. It is the Lionel 3656 cattle car. Cool car. Um, I've kind of avoided these things because I know they're extremely erratic performers. This car is actually in really good shape. It just needs a little bit of love and a very gentle cleaning. Not a rare, not a rare variation. No armor decals on it. No black lettering. Just a good old simple little Lionel cattle car. Don't know what I'm going to do with this. Not my cup of tea. I like the milk car and I like the later version of the uh, horse car for this one. Good little car. Definitely cool to get it. Um, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one just yet. All right. What do we got here? Next up, we have a real exciting car. Your very basic run-of-the-mill Pennsylvania short gondola. Uh, earlier variation, it's got a 
big old crack right there. So this car is kind of foobarred. This one does have one intact flying shoe truck. The other one is uh, fiberboard's broken. The uh, pickups of the shoe is ripped off. So this is more of a junk car. This is more or less if somebody wanted the trucks off of it, just rip the fiberboards out completely just to have some trucks that roll. Nothing too exciting. Next up, what do we got? Um, oh, this is a car that I was excited about. I might keep this one for my personal collection. Now, there is no telltales for this car, but this is the Lionel 3424 Wabash Operating Brakeman car. Now, normally there's a little guy on top, and what happens is whenever you're getting ready to go under a bridge or a tunnel, you think the little dude's gonna smack his head, but he'll flip himself down onto the roof. But there is no telltales for this, and then there is no little dude. It's a cool car. I mean, it doesn't seem to be in bad shape at all. It just seems like it needs a little bit of a bath and it'd come out beautiful after that. So and this is a car I might keep. I like these 64, 64 sized cars. Good car, good graphics, just definitely my cup of tea. This one might stay in the personal collection, not 100% sure, but this one, if anything is gonna stay in the collection, it'd more than likely be this one. All right, next up, what do we got? Oh, we can't do that one yet. So next up, what do we got? So this goes with that button that I showed y'all earlier. This is the N&W Hopper. This is, I can't remember the number of this one off the top of my head, but this is the N&W Operating Hopper where the bottom does open with the power of a uh, solenoid and a magnet, or not a solenoid, but just a magnet. And this goes on the 456 coal ramp and other coaling accessories. So whoever had these definitely like their coal, uh, coal trains because they got a 497 coaling station and at some point, they had to have had a um, 456 call ramp. Very cool car. I was very excited to see this, especially for the $5 that they had on this thing. Because it was half off. So this would have been $250. I would have just bought this car alone just to have it, and I would have been happy with it. This is definitely a nice little car. Um, yeah, it, it needs a little bit of a bath, but everything does. So we're going to move on to the next thing. Can't do that one. Um, we can do this one. So, oh man, the dust is starting to get to me. I'm trying not to sneeze. I won't even lie to y'all. All right, so next up, we have a 6430. Now, this is the piggyback uh, transportation flat car. There's no piggybacks. It is just a flat car. This is one that if it gets a light bath, I feel like it'll clean up absolutely beautifully. There's no big scratches or chips in it. It's just, it's got dust and grime on it. That's, the, that's just the case with everything in this estate. It just definitely just sat somewhere for a very, very long time. Good little car, nothing too crazy kind of bummed that it's missing the piggybacks because I do have one of these already but I really like that car it's a fun car to run but we're gonna go right into the next thing and boy oh boy what could this big thing be other than the stock car or the uh corral for the stock car I have not tested this thing I don't know I, I don't really know a whole lot about these things just not my cup of tea I know that they don't work well but we did we got real lucky we got one cow we have one whole cow to test this thing with if I decide to fix it up. But yeah, I was very happy to see that this, that the stock car actually did come with its corral. That made me very, very happy to see because you need the two for them to work. So if I do decide to putz with this and try to get this thing working, if it doesn't work as is, I'll definitely, uh, definitely be needing this corral. So we'll see what happens. I got some, uh, got some paper falling. Sorry about that. All right, we're down to the big three. And I think we're going to start with something that I don't really know exactly what it is. All I know is it is not Lionel, and it is pre-war. Everything else we've seen is post-war. And this engine is rough, and it is missing a lot of pieces. But this is a gorgeous pre-war American Flyer uh, cast iron engine from what I was able to determine from people through Facebook. This was made in 1930 and 1931 only. Very cool little engine. It definitely needs some work. This is, uh, pretty sure this is supposed to be the headlight light and uh, not exactly sure what it's doing all the way back there. But this is a cool little engine. This might be one of those I just keep it on display. Just, it's a cool looking engine. Definitely caught me off guard. I thought this thing would have been made in the teens to the 20s and definitely not in the 30s. Cool little engine. Not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with this. I don't know if I want to dump the money in to get this um, running again or what I'm going to do, but it isn't seized, which is always nice to see. But yeah, this was definitely the oddball out of the group. It was this one random pre-war American Flyer engine. Very, very cool. 
definitely thought it was a lot earlier than, earlier than the 1930s. But we're gonna move on to the next thing. And I figure these next two things are a pair. So let's start with the tender. This thing is gross. This thing is nasty. This, this tender, it needs a lot of love. It just, it needs a good bath and a lot, a lot of TLC. But this is the 2466 Whistling Tender. Once again, we got another one of those flying pickups. So I'm assuming whoever these trains belong to, they definitely got them in 1946. Because I believe there was the components for one of the sets from 46 in here. Not 100% sure, but I believe there is. But yeah, this is just typical post-war whistling tender. Just the early version with that flying shoe pickup. But yeah, this thing needs some love. I feel like this could clean up okay. It's kind of a 50-50 if it's going to clean up nice or if it's just going to clean up eh, okay. And now let me show you guys the main reason why I went after this lot. This was for the project engine and the coaling station. Those were the two biggest things that drew me to the lot. And for 80 bucks, I decided, you know what? I'm going to get all of it since they made me that offer. So this right here, this is the post-war 224, not the 224E. This is the post-war rendition. Very simple little engine with some uh, Baldwin disc drivers. This engine, I used to have one of these actually a few years ago. Ended up selling it, trying to get something with uh, smoke. I think I traded it for a 2026 at some point. This is a good little engine. I mean, cosmetically, it's not bad. It just needs to be cleaned. Now, we do have some issues with uh, this trailing truck is actually broke off. There's two little pieces that are supposed to help hold it in place that are broken. And as you guys can tell, the front pilot wheels, those are completely gone. But it's a good little project. So let me try to get some of this stuff out of the way. This is the haul that we got from an estate sale that just happened to pop on off Facebook Marketplace last second. I don't know. How do you guys think I did for 80 bucks? I mean, I'm not really worried about the monetary value of these things. I more or less just wanted them for projects just because I'm having fun ripping this stuff open and apart and just, just to tinker and have fun with. Well, 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 that's what we got at the uh, estate sale. Very last second thing to go and do on a Saturday morning when I was just trying to sleep in on my day off. But I'm definitely glad I did it. I know some of you guys may be looking at this and going, wow, that's a whole lot of junk that needs to just be thrown away. But I won't lie, I've gotten absolutely addicted to giving these things a second life because these trains are indestructible. Yeah, we might need a few new pieces here and there but you can find the parts, you can get these things cleaned up, you can get them running. The only one I'm not 100% sure about is definitely gonna be this uh, cast iron American Flyer one. But I have faith that we can get most of this stuff cleaned up and looking really, really nice because there's not paint issues, there's not paint loss, there's not huge scratches. It's just dirty and missing a few pieces here and there. Like the coaling station, missing the roof. Guess what, I can get reproductions or I could try to uh, do a little bit of hunting online or talking on Facebook and try to get the all original parts for that coaling station. Not 100% sure. We're just going to see what happens. Um, do you guys want me to try to document my process? Like I could do, I could do a very easy video showing the basic techniques to try, you should try to clean these things without being really aggressive on them. It's very simple, very easy. But you guys just let me know what you want to see. There, I might try to make a series out of that coaling station. Not sure. First, I got to figure out if I can get all the parts because there's a lot of parts on there that need to be changed out because they're just worn out with time because whoever had that thing definitely loved it a lot and played with it a whole lot. But guys, once again, thank you so much for watching. I want to say thank you guys seriously for 1,300 subscribers and I am sorry for being so inactive. Life has been hectic. Life's been busy. Um, Yeah, I just... I'll make it up to you guys, I promise. I'm gonna try to get back into the habit of these things. And I know I said I had a post-war unboxing that I was planning to do about a month and a half ago. That is still on the table. That video will still happen. It's just, I gotta find time to do it, uh, time to actually film it. It is currently 8.30 at night and I got work bright and early at five in the morning tomorrow. But I wanted to get a video out to all of you guys because I appreciate all of you and I just wanna say thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you have enjoyed. Stay tuned, join along for the ride, and we will see what happens. And as always, have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Preston from the PGK Railway. I'll catch you all next time.